wherever the sisters might be called mother tell us about blessed mary puspan now yes mother each time we hear the story we are filled with a spiritual energy and a sense of fulfillment of being the daughters of mary puspan the children don't know about mary puspan mm uh let them also hear afterwards we can cut the cake okay please be seated Marie Puspan was born at Durdan in France. Durdan is 50 kilometers away from Paris. Every time I say the story of Marie Puspan. This time I shall ask Sister Daisy to speak to all of you. Sister Daisy? Thank you, mother. Maybe I shall begin with the context in which Marie Puspan was born and grew. During the 16th and 17th centuries the protestant soldiers were thriving with a battle and persecution Durdan never gave in to protestantism and stubbornly remained faithful to the catholic faith
the people were in great distress and pain the life of many were in danger poverty sickness and distress have stolen the lives of many they were fighting for life without a piece of bread and a drop of drinking water moved with compassion st vincent de paul came forward with the rescue ministries he established confraternities of charity in every parish for the care of the sick and suffering at that time we see claude puspan and julian fourier the parents of mary puspan were fervent christians fully integrated in the activities of their parish commitment to the parochial responsibilities and to the confraternity of charity in the parish integrated the puspan family into the whole life of durdan mary's mother julian fourier was the treasurer of the confraternity of charity in the parish a family rooted in faith mary puspan was born on 14th october 1653 as the eldest daughter of puspan family the home was filled with joy and light her mother was very particular about her character formation and training in piety going with her mother to the church she used to fix her gaze upon the eucharistic lord though god gifted the puspan couple with six children god took them back in their infancy it was a great loss and grief was unbearable especially for mary and her mother in 1665 god gifted them with a son they named him claude to be a godfather or godmother for baptism was reserved for really pious and god fearing people as a child mary showed her unshakable faith and shared with people the righteousness of god she was chosen to be the godmother of her own brother claude claude grew in piety and wisdom mary too helped him Mary accompanied her mother who was an active member of the confraternity of charity to visit the sick and poor she cared for them patiently and cheerfully Mary learned to do the handcrafts from her mother she grew as a favorite of the neighbors too the family rejoiced in her dealings all of a sudden that the trials entered the healthy puspan family mari is 22 years old the death of the mother having occurred fairly early placed on the shoulders of mary still young the responsibilities of the household and of the education of her younger brother who was only 10 years old
trusting in the divine providence and following the footsteps of crucified Christ, she accepted the responsibilities. Later came the financial difficulties of her father. He could not repay the loan taken from the bank to invest in the business. Being afraid of humiliation, he went away from his hometown in 1683. Her father's bankruptcy and his illness which obliged Marie to take over the direction of the family business. Along with the responsibility of the family and business, her brother Claude's studies, she had to be a mother and a father to her brother Claude. Trials and struggles of life gave Marie Puspan a lot of opportunities to depend on God. The courageous perseverance in the face of difficulties which she exhibited in her life with a fortitude never failed. Using her time, talents and opportunities, she reformed the business along with other responsibilities. In order to provide for her brother a more prosperous enterprise, she adopted the new techniques that her uncle Jean Lefebvre had tried in the vicinity of Paris. She assessed their potential and decided to introduce them in Durdan, where people remained tradition-bound. She did not hesitate to bring to Durdan two specialist instructors to buy the expensive machinery capable of superior output and to substitute wool for silk in the weaving of stockings as it sold better. She put forward her steps, reading the need of the time. Soon she recruited young apprentices and taught them, so much so that in a few years the Puspan small shop became a prosperous manufacturer and her compatriots followed her example. Marie Puspan could engage simultaneously in diverse undertakings without one being detrimental to the others. She was attentive to the success of her enterprise as to the duties inherent to her position in the confraternity of charity to which her mother had initiated her and where she was replaced to her with the functions of treasurer. By 1693, Durda knew an extraordinary misery with epidemics and famine which led the little town to greater distress. Additional devotion needed to cope in times when resources failed. It was also the time of the encounter with Father Mespolier, a Dominican, and admission of Marie Puspan into the Durdan Fraternity of the Third Order of St. Dominic. This fraternity was fervent and especially devoted to the works of mercy. While keeping the spirit of charity of St. Vincent de Paul, Marie Puspan wanted to belong to the Dominican family. The four pillars on Dominican life, contemplative, apostolic, communitarian, and study in search of truth made a great impact on her. She received it with great joy and enthusiasm, keeping the compassionate face of Jesus in her heart, and her mind was ready to set apart her whole life to the service of the Church in the exercise of charity. Maripuspan found in it a support for new growth as we see in the episode of Marie Olivia, a poor and sick widow. Maripuspan was not content with assisting her, but she installed her in her own room to support her and care for her until her death in 1694. Truly, she showed the face of the mercy of God to the whole world. 
Mary's heart was overflowing with mercy towards the poor, the sick and the downtrodden. She recognized a call within to concentrate herself totally to them. Her mind and heart was filled with the inspiration from the Holy Spirit. She could hear the Spirit prompting in her heart to accept the sacrifices and the sufferings to be with one with Christ in loving her neighbors. In all this, Mary Puspan went beyond the level of an ordinary Christian life. She gave free reign to her higher aspirations, those of charity. This can be seen at the time of her brother's marriage contracts. She added to it a business contract for only four years. She was slowly distancing herself from her success in business and from the fortune it brought to her. In 1695, at the age of 45, Mary started her journey to Sandville, a few kilometers away from Durdan. She left behind her home and hometown, her name, fame, and all that she earned. Trusting in the divine providence, she came to Sandville. Love of God and others, mercy and courage, and the ardent desire to fulfill the will of God guided her constantly. Only one contemplative aim, love of God and love of others, moved her to speak to God or of God with a charity full of mercy and compassion. Charity which knows the whole person and wants to respond to its hunger. Hunger for bread and for knowledge. Hunger for dignity and recognition. Hunger for truth and hunger for God. Mary encountered a menacing face in the village of Sandville. Many young women without shelter or support. Little girls without education. The sick without assistance or care. She entered into the humble village of Sandville. The people of Sandville were simple, poor and ordinary. They had not much relationship with the outside world. They worked and earned their daily bread. The people were affected by famine, epidemics and war. attracted by the mercy and compassion with which Mary served them. She listened to the Lord in prayer before she did anything. When she realized the people were in darkness of ignorance, she started the primary education along with the healing ministry. People trusted Mary Puspan and started to come for any of their need. She became part of their life. Within a short span of time, she could bring up a primary health center and a primary school. She gave education and spiritual conferences to young women as well as old. She helped the women to stand on their own. She taught them knitting as well as tailoring. The people of Sandville started to come up economically. The personality and the exemplary life of Mary Puspan created a new enthusiasm in the hearts of young women of Sandville. She was open to receive them and cautioned them, saying, Charity is the soul of the community. When the young girls came forward, 
once again she recognized another inner call and promptings of the spirit to give form for a religious institute Maripuspan always experienced the comfort and the guidance of mother mary she wanted to imitate her mystery of presentation in jerusalem temple at the age of 3 a mystery of listening and contemplation a mystery of acceptance and gift which radically consecrates her to the lord with a yes which is renewed day after day mary is for us a model of fidelity and of gift Mary Puspan gave birth to a new charism combining the model of presentation of Mary in the temple the spirit of charity of Saint Vincent de Paul and spirituality of Saint Dominic especially the words of Father Vicar what attracts the preacher is that one is destined to save others as well as one's own self thus she gifted the universal church the congregation of the dominican sisters of charity of the presentation of the blessed virgin in 1696 mari puspan told her daughters God brought you here in the first place to grant you further means of working out your salvation. Furthermore, he has led you here so that you may continue this great work by working also for the salvation of others in the manner that befits you. That is by teaching, works of charity and good example. She again exhorted to them saying, keep the presence of god in all your actions in order to do this speak to him often and speak about him often she reached out to many parishes as many calls came and the number of sisters increased at the age of 90 mary puspan responded to the lord's call to himself and entered into his presence today Dominican Sisters of the Presentation an international community is responding creatively to human needs too. and there are about 2500 sisters serving in four continents in 37 countries each according to her own gifts and talents through charity the binding force of our life we are united in service to the love of god and humanity The mother house in Tours stands as a symbol of unity, a house of all to transmit the spirit and charism of Mary Puspan to all those who do not know Christ and all the cultures open to receive Christ. Congregations Generalate is in Rome Via Valderi where the mother general and the councilors and other administrative functions are coordinated In 1971 the seed of the charism of Blessed Mary Puspan was sown in Indian soil It took root and branched out to eight states of India through various ministries In 1971 the Dominican Sisters of the Presentation came to Kutikad At present Kutikad is in the diocese of Irinyalakuda in Kerala The sisters have embraced the mission as Mary Puspan did to serve the church and the faithful according to their needs Today we are in various ministries in 17 communities in India and one in Korea The headquarters of the province of India is in Bangalore. A lifetime radiating God's love.
Mary Puspan was a gift to the family, to the church, to the congregation and to the world at large. She gave the example of humility, simplicity, poverty and love of work in her service to God and people. On 20th November in 1994, Pope John Paul II raised her to the altar, giving an honored title, Social Apostle of Charity. The charism of Blessed Marie Puspan is very relevant even in 21st century in all sectors of life. Dominican Sisters of the Presentation has witnessed many wars, remarkable historical events in the world for last 322 years. Blessed Mary Puspan has given us a responsibility to fulfill in the sight of God for the service of humanity. Holding on the strong hand of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit and looking with a, with a vision of the Lord, the sisters live their consecration fully and totally. As we await the canonization of the Blessed Mary Puspan, let us grow day by day in our call to holiness. Thank you, Sister Daisy. You did well. The responsibility Mary Puspan gave us has to be actualized by each one of us today. Let us wait for the canonization of Blessed Mary Puspan. Let us continue to celebrate the feast. Shall we cut the cake? Sweetly we sing a song of love and cheer. We wish you on this happy day. Happy we are to have your presence here. We wish you on this happy day. Happy, happy feast day, happy, happy feast day, happy feast day to you, dear sisters. Happy, happy feast day, happy, happy feast day, happy feast day to you, dear sisters. So we sing a song, a song of love and joy, we wish you on this happy day. Happy we are to have your presence here. We wish you on this happy day. Joy and peace forever, joy and peace forever, joy and peace forever, dear sisters. Joy and peace forever, joy and peace forever, joy and peace forever, dear sisters. So we sing a song, a song of love and joy. We wish you on this happy day. Happy we are to have your presence here. We wish you on this happy day. Happy we are to have your presence here. We wish you on this happy day. Sweetly we sing a song of love and cheer. We wish you on this happy day. Happy we are to have your presence here. We wish you on this happy day. Happy, happy feast day. Happy, happy feast day. Happy feast day to you, dear sisters. Happy, happy feast day. Happy, happy feast day. Happy feast day to you, dear sisters. So we sing a song, a song of love and joy. We wish 